Hello, I'm Dr. Steve Hotze, and welcome to Health and Wellness Solutions. Thank you so much for joining us. With me today from the Hotze Health and Wellness Center is Dr. David Sheridan and Dr. Don Ellsworth. We're going to discuss today why thyroid blood tests really aren't a very good way to determine whether or not a person has hypothyroidism. Why, why aren't blood tests that are routinely and commonly used by physicians not the best way to diagnose hypothyroidism? Well, we're looking in the wrong place. Okay, why do you say that? Hypothyroidism <laughs> occurs in the cells. The blood takes things to the cells. Let me give an example that might help. If you think of it, our cells are our factories. If you were looking at a real factory, you could see how many workers were headed to the factory. And if there was a full parking lot, you might think, that's doing pretty well. But we all know that oftentimes we'll see a full parking lot suddenly become empty because the reality behind the scenes was that there were problems in the factory. Well, our cells can have the workers showing up. We can have enough thyroid headed to our cells. The problem is inside of our cells, it has to be used. That process occurs best under ideal circumstances such as not aging, no stress, no toxins. In the real world, there's always a drop off in efficiency. We're looking in the wrong place when we look at the blood work, the problems in the cells. So really the blood work won't tell us how effectively the cells are utilizing thyroid hormones or how effectively the thyroid hormones are developing or causing the cells to develop energy production. Right. We can only see if there's underproduction and only then if it's enough so that it clearly comes off the scale. That often doesn't happen. What other reasons? Well, you know, there's another issue where, where different people can have totally different individual normal ranges. Mm -hmm. So when someone is told their labs are normal, therefore they are okay, that's exactly what the blood work cannot tell you. It can't tell me I'm normal for me. You know, the conventional expression is hypothyroidism is a laboratory diagnosis, and I'm gonna shock everybody, I'll agree with them, it is, but normal isn't. Normal is not a laboratory diagnosis, and that's what we forget. Well, would you say then a, a patient has an optimal level he should have of thyroid hormone rather than just be in the normal range? Absolutely. For every individual, there's an optimal level of thyroid within their system for which they would operate the best. Absolutely. And that in a lab test isn't... It's a population statistic like height. If I wake up tomorrow at five foot eight, that's a normal height, but it's not normal for me. You know, I often like to remind uh, patients that the blood test that your physician may take to try to diagnose hypothyroidism, if we took that blood test result and gave it to any doctor anywhere in the country, just the blood test result, the physician could not tell you whether or not the patient was a man or woman, how old the patient was, what the symptoms of the patient are, or what the weight of the patient is. It would give you no idea. A blood test doesn't tell you anything about how a patient is doing. It is just an arbitrary value. Well, they normally, when they check for thyroid hormones, they're really not even evaluating primarily the thyroid hormone. What, what is the common blood test used to determine whether or not you have good thyroid function? That is funny. That, you know, typically doctors say your <coughs> thyroid hormone levels are fine, and they're actually measured a pituitary hormone. Thyroid stimulating hormone is actually made by our pituitary gland. Something's kind of strange. That's considered to be the gold standard, by the way, folks. Looking at the pituitary glands function is considered to be the best way to know about your thyroid, which gives you an idea that doctors are placing their emphasis in the wrong area. And the thyroid stimulating hormone values are different between different societies and different groups yeah, of Once doctors. again, you have different norms for different individuals. Mm -hmm. This is the only case that I know of in all of endocrinology where they look at the brain hormone, the regulator, to assess that, what they call the end organ function. Everywhere else, they look at cortisol levels, or, or what we do, look at thyroid levels. But again, the lab has to be interpreted in the context of the person. And the TSH levels, which is the thyroid stimulating hormones, have different ranges in different groups of doctors and from labs. Tell me about that. This is a debated issue. The standard lab value is 0.5 to 5.5 for a TSH, but there is a very conventional group of doctors that says anything above 3.0 is actually an elevated TSH consistent with hypothyroidism. 
yet doctors are routinely debating this back and forth. Some studies have suggested that a TSH in the twos is a early indicator that you're headed towards hypothyroidism, and the, and the debate goes on. So it's, so it's really not a gold standard. If we have different groups of doctors saying different levels or the so-called normal range, that just proves the point that you can't put your trust just in a blood value because doctors arbitrarily change what's considered normal and what's not considered normal. Now, the, the range that they have for, for TSH levels and the free thyroid levels are very, very broad. The way they determine what the range of normal is, is they take the average of the last thousand tests and they call, determine what the average is and they call that the mean and then they have plus or minus two standard deviations, which encompasses 95% of the population. So at any time blood tests are given, 95% of the people will always fall within the normal range. So 95% of the people can never be diagnosed, according to blood tests, as hypothyroid. That means only Two and a half percent of the people on the low side can be diagnosed with hypothyroidism. Two and a half people on the high side is hyper, which is too much thyroid. So using the routine standard blood normal range, 95% of the people will always be considered normal. And we know that 95% of the people aren't normal. Another thing, interestingly, what we did at the OT Health and Wellness Center, because we are very, we look with a jaundiced eye at blood test, we took uh, 40 patients and took their blood and sent their blood to two separate labs. Each patient's blood went to two separate labs and we measured thyroid hormone levels and TSH levels and we found up to 25% difference in the values on the same patient between labs. So the real question is which lab do we believe or do we believe the labs at all or do we believe what the patient says? A diagnosis should depend on the patient's history and physical, not upon what lab did I send the blood to. So a number of reasons that you can't really depend upon blood tests to diagnose hypothyroidism is because first, blood tests don't tell you what's going on at the cellular level, how effectively the thyroid hormones are functioning at the cellular level. Secondly, the thyroid hormone that is most checked, thyroid stimulating hormone, isn't even a thyroid hormone. It's a regulatory hormone produced by uh, area of the brain called the pituitary gland. Thirdly, the TSH level and its ranges vary depending on which group of doctors you're listening to, whether you're listening to endocrinologists or whether you're looking at the lab, the value and ranges change. Fourthly, uh, when you're looking at free thyroid hormone levels, the ranges are so very wide uh, that they encompass 95% of the population. You know. And so 95% of the people, even with hypothyroid symptoms and signs, will never be diagnosed based upon a blood test because they always fall within the normal lab uh, range of normal. And finally, uh, the fifth reason that uh, you can't depend upon the blood test is because when you send the blood to different labs, the same blood, you can get up to 25% different in the values from the different labs. So you don't know which lab to believe uh, is giving you the right values. And how can you base a diagnosis when you have 25% variation in the values? Well, Dr. Sheridan and Dr. Ellsworth, thanks so much for joining us today. And thank each one of you for being here today. I hope you found this video informative and be sure to join our email list. Once a week, we'll be sending a video highlighting various topics regarding women's health, hypothyroidism, natural hormone replacement, and numerous other pertinent videos regarding your health. If you have questions regarding your health, please email us at drhotze at drhotze.com or have a free consultation with one of our wellness consultants at 877-698-8698. We're excited to help you get on the path of health and wellness so that you enjoy a better quality of your life. This is Dr. Otsi saying thanks for joining us.